What's up, everyone? Welcome to a special edition of the Geekish Network, where we actually had a last minute booking. Uh, we have Budgetan and Kajo Baldesimo. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. If you all do not know who they are, let me tell you who they are. Budget is the writer of Tresse. Yes, yes, yes. And Kanjo is the artist of Tresse. So if anybody wants to know what happened with Tresse is, Tresse is a Filipino comic book that goes over Filipino mythology and folklore. And it follows the life of Alexandra Tresse. And she is... I don't know. She's like Constantine, a badass. She's like everything we want. She's like Constantine meets Black Widow and one human being. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And they end up nailing a Netflix deal where it, it turned into an animated series. And it's not just any animated series. There's a lot of anime made by foreign developers that comes under Netflix and it does okay. But Tresse really knocked it out the box. So with that being said, I would like them to introduce themselves. They can give you they can give you way better introduction than I can. Trust me. <laughs> um, so budget, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, I, um, th- thank you very much, guys, for inviting us here. Oh, oh that looks like a great mug of beer, right? Oh there. yeah, I did it just for you. I said I was gonna get water. I brought a beer mug. <laughs> We're celebrating tonight. <laughs> But it, it's seven in the morning here. Maybe I'll have that later. You should in the go day. get. You should get one now. <laughs> celebrate just for us. <laughs> yeah, we should be doing that. Mm-hmm. We haven't celebrated enough. Hi, my name is. Uh, I, I, as mentioned, I'm Budget. I'm a writer and co-creator of Trese along with Kajo. Uh, me and Kajo have been uh, working on this for fifteen years. I mean, we've been making comics for fifteen years. Um, and uh, as you might have already uh, heard from from Jojo, that the anime took ten years to pitch and get produced, but we're now very very happy that it's on Netflix. Kajo, <laughs> any words? Hi, hi, I'm Kajo Kajo Baldissimo, uh, artist and co-creator of Plese. Thank you for having us. Okay, where are you at, Kajo? I'm in uh, the south of the Philippines, uh, okay. Davao City. Okay. Okay. So you where Alexandria lives at? You're in the same city uh, where she lives at, right? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Alexandria is in the capital of. Uh, oh, she's in Manila. The Philippines. She's in, she's in Manila. Manila. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 But yes, you should. Uh, since Kajo has been living in Davao for the past couple of years, we should start setting some stories in Davao. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, speaking of that, Earl jumped in. This is oh. Earl. Earl is going, part folks? of your animated series. Right. Huh? Yep. How are y'all doing? Where, aha, there's... Hi, Earl. General. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, Earl. Very He's good. also the voice of the Midnight Storm. <laughs> 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 All right. So, what is, so you've been working on this for 15 years. That's a long time. <laughs> Yes. Oh, very <laughs> yes. Much. Yes. And I take it you all hit the pinnacle when it got deal. So, what was the first idea? Where did this idea come from? What was the initial thought of this idea? Um, the I, well, you mentioned it earlier, Constantine, right? So, so mm-hmm. you know, me and Kajo, we both love comic books. We've been collecting it mm-hmm. all these years. We're I guess we're a bigger Batman fan than than Constantine. Mm. Um, but aside from that, it's um, it, those are the comic books that I that I love to read. But I also like TV shows like X Files and CSI. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you any of you remember Carl Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Uh, it was like a '70s TV show. I think it only ran a season, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it was about a reporter based in New York who always ended up reporting about supernatural stuff. Uh, happening in New York and they showed it in the Philippines late night when I should have been sleeping <laughs> I was watching Carl Kolchak uh, the night and getting myself scared right mm-hmm. um, so uh, and also heavily influenced by uh, funnily enough I didn't know that me and Kajo were watching uh, Ghost in the Shell at the you know we were watching it at the same time and it was only when we started to work on Trese 
when I when we realized, oh, you were watching that too. Um, so you know, especially the what was that standalone complex? Mm -hmm. uh, it was very episodic, and it was all about cyber crimes, right? Mm -hmm. But it was uh, and it, you know set in the future. So um, the the police procedural stories is was the starting point you know i wanted to tell a police procedural in manila but you know i didn't want to go for through the science route like csi and i thought you know since manila is a place where we you know if you go there we still believe in magic right you can go to church on a sunday uh and then when you step out of that church there's a there's a 400 year old church in manila Right out of that, right outside that church, there are people who will sell you. They say are magic amulets, or mm. potions, mm. or you know candles that you light if you want somebody to get healed. So it's a strange mix of like you know modern day city, four hundred year old church, and people who sell you magic items outside the church. And people believe in these. You know, we still believe in these things. And yeah, it's growing up in the Philippines where. Both me and Kajo have had our fair share of our parents telling us, oh, oh, you, you, need, you need to come in before sundown because the aswang will come, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you need to put garlic by the window because a chanak might come in and, you know, attack you. So, so there, you know, we grew up, it was just, and the newspapers would report it. You know, in the 80s, really? I remember newspapers would say, Manananggal you know, uh, terrorizes teenagers in San Paolo. So to me as a kid, I was going, it's in the newspapers. I didn't know what a tabloid was. It's in the newspapers. <laughs> it must be real. Yes. Um, and all of those combined into what is Trece today. So that's where the Trece started. You're like, hey, the world needs to know about these, these stories I read in the newspaper <laughs> as a kid. And we're going to put it in this fictional world. So what made you choose Alexandra Tresse? It could have been, you could have picked any man to be this role. Why did y'all go with a woman? Um, so, so that started with, um, um, <laughs> I've, I've answered this question. I'm not trying to figure out the shortest way to, to tell <laughs> without telling you about my childhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, no, but I th I think um, what kicked it off was a was a text message from Kajo in two thousand and five. Mm. Um, and just to give it context, both me and Kajo have were working for ad agencies at the time. Um, we were like five buildings away, and we had worked on other comic books in the past, you know. Uh, but it was always for work. It was always like a uh, a side hustle uh, for you know to do a comic book for this person or that person. Um, but finally, in uh, 2005, Kajo said, you know, he sent me a message saying, say, hey, Budge, let's make a comic book. You know, just give me any script. Give me a 20-page script. And he said he will finish it in 20 days. And of oh, course, wow. I didn't believe him because we were, <laughs> our, our work hours were, were crazy, right? You know, uh, at work. So I dug up an old script. So I, you know, I was talking about Carl Kolchak. So I wrote a comic book script about a tabloid reporter named mm. Anton Trece, and he was investigating supernatural crime in Manila. Mm. And just to see if, you know, Kajo said, you know, I can, I can spend, an, uh, in, I can draw a page in an hour, was Kajo's promise. So just to test it, I sent him a page of Anton Trece, you know, fighting an aswang, you know, three times his size. And Kajo did say after an hour, he like emailed me the page. And and then he emailed me a profile pic of Anton Trece, who already had the, the devil's haircut. Um, and I was looking at that sketch and I was going, why does it seem like we've seen this guy too many times? You know, mm. tough guy with a jacket, with a you know, secret weapon, and he can easily beat up all of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And I flash back to all of the characters I just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Batman, Constantine, uh, all of the characters from my favorite TV shows. And it just clicked in my head of like, what have we not seen? <clears throat> Especially in the Philippines, what have we not seen? We haven't seen a lead female character kicking ass. 
So I texted Kajo that very moment, what if Trese was a woman? And then Kajo just replied to me, oh, that would make her more badass. Uh, and in the same day, he sends me the sketch of Trese. Uh, uh, you know, she, she's got this intense look. She's just staring at you. <laughs> that stare that just makes you want to run away if you ever get mm -hmm. that stare. Uh, or would make any aswang back down, for that matter. Um, and and I knew that was our character, um, and um, and yeah, that 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 kicked, and that just made all the difference. I feel. I mean, I look back now and think about all of the stories he made, and if we kept him, if we kept Trese a man, then it would have just felt like oh, it's another tough guy, you know, handling tougher monsters. Okay. But yeah. So you oh. actually had her before you even crafted the story. <laughs> so you're like, this is our character. We're going to build a world around her. Nice. Nice. So uh, I have another question because I want to keep in the realm of characters. How did you build the other characters and how did you choose the monsters to come into this world? I'm pretty sure the Philippines is full of mythical creatures. And you could have picked any number of them. And Kajo, how did you draw them that way? Because I'm pretty sure there's folklore and you're like, we've seen this a million times. I'm going to make mine slightly different in this modern world. So the first question is, yeah. Yep. Um, as, um, I'll, I'll talk about the characters a bit in Kajo and talk about the designs. But yeah, really quickly, it was um, uh, we want when after after me and Kajo finished the first story, and the first story is based on uh, an urban legend uh, in the Philippines. If you drive down that street, most probably someone will tell you about the, the legend of the white lady of Balete Drive. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a story we grew up with a long time. Um, and then eventually after we got that done, I wrote a list of all of the other creatures that I wanted to feature in Trese. And again, these are the creatures we grew up with. The Tikbala, the Chana, the Manananggal, and then of course the Aswang. Um, and based on that list, that's when we one by one started to go through that list. Okay. Um, Kaj, how did you update their designs first? All the, the designs basically are a mishmash of all the the local comic books, horror comic books, um, and the uh, TV shows that are constantly playing here in the Philippines. And I was uh, younger and when I was a teenager. So basically, you get uh, uh, the cool uh, elements from this design and then another cool uh, element from that other design and then mash them together and come up with something hopefully that people think it's cooler or just um, appropriate <laughs> for okay. the story. I, I just out of the detective comics, such as Batman or Constantine, what are your other inspirations for this? What can, what do you look at? This is source material, this video game, this TV show, uh, besides the show yeah. and it's in the seventies, what it called you say, yeah, we need something like this. We need to be, this needs to be in our comic book. Well, uh, aside from yeah, Batman, uh, Ghost in the Shell, mm -hmm. probably Sandman. I love Sandman. Sandman, okay. Yeah, so the the, okay. the weirdness, the world. I mm -hmm. think uh, somehow I integrated that in the visual uh, design of Trese. Okay. And her world, and some other things that, so many other things that I can't name right now. <laughs> can't name them all. So, uh, Kajo, you um. I, I you posted this the other day that uh, ye, the um, it, uh, Alexandra's like um, her uniform was uh, kind of based off a, uh, a portrait of uh, Rizal. Ah, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. There's an image of Jose Rizal that is. Uh, you Google it, it will be there. It's a very popular image mm. picture of uh, the national like, hero. Was that intentional, or did you just kind of see it and you're like, that's going to be the design? No, it was always in my in my head, because that that mm. that image is, is whenever I I think even in grade school, when I uh, were at, I think uh, my teacher. I can't remember when, but 
they know I can draw. So I think my teacher mm -hmm. asked me to draw Serizal. You can always find that in books, that particular image. And I think it stuck with me. Okay. Until that time when, hmm, what's a, what's a cool looking coat for Alexandra? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's super cool. Because when you posted it, it was like, oh my god! Then it it just like snapped. You know, it it, it was like, oh, that's it's, that's, it's, uh, yeah. that's so cool. So I I have a question. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm new to Tressa. I I I, I binged it immediately though after <laughs> after after seeing this. Oh, that's time. awesome. So, um, mm -hmm. and there was a you know to me. Uh, it just felt authentic, right? Um, and I think that sometimes you can tell uh, when uh, creators are passionate about what they're doing because it seems unapologetic. It seems like it's, you know, it's it's everything that you want to do, and and you get told sometimes not to do, and and and, and you do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because you because you believe in it, and uh, it's it's funny because after I after I watched it. Then I, you know, then I went outside of that and I started seeing like it press and I started seeing like, you know, the after shows and, 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 and so on and so forth. And the thing that really struck me was how vested the Filipino community was in, mm -hmm. in, in this, right? Because, you know, it's something that you don't see, right? It's, 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 it's something that you don't see and you, you want to see yourself being fantastic. You, you, you want to envision yourself being, you know, empowered. Um, and it, it, it reminds me, uh, you know, a lot of how the black community felt when Black Panther came out, right? It, it was like, here you had this movie and everybody was black, you know, and somehow it wasn't a big deal. It was just, hey, they're in Africa. Right. So, uh, you know, I guess everybody should be black, you know. And so when I do, so when I see Tresse, you know, that's the, you know, and, and, and everybody's Filipino. Why? Yeah, Manila. Right. Like, and, 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 and just and just from, you know, and, and, and I want to and I want to hear, like, yeah. honestly, like yeah. deep down, like in your soul. Mm. Right. How does it feel? to get that kind of recognition from your people, number one, and then from other people like myself who, you know, can't give you nothing but love because we, we see it. We see you. We see you. And how does that feel? Um, before, before I answer that question, while you were talking about, you know, uh, showing – showing your culture, showing your people uh, in your story. It just reminded me of somebody made a film about the 1986 revolution that happened in Manila. And I guess because it was funded by um, a, an American you know, company, they decided to tell the story from the point of view of an American reporter who came to Manila. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, right. everything revolves around uh, anything was Gary Busey. You know? Oh my God! <laughs> of course, I don't even I know this. What is this called? Um, I it's called. I don't want to see it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but Another of course, white the rest guy. of us were just all too happy to see Filipino actors and actresses, you know, in the film. But for some reason, he was the center of the story, and there was even a little bit of a romance story happening there. Oh, of course, there was. <laughs> You know, he fought in the middle of the revolution, he falls <laughs> in love with a Filipina. But but now that you're talking about this, uh, you know, I was like thinking, why? Yeah, we that story didn't have to be revolving around a white reporter reporting no. about Vanilla, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but again, a dangerous think, life. That's what it's called. There you go. <laughs> that was great. It's called a dangerous <laughs> life. <laughs> Which is. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a, uh, uh, they were trying to echo a uh, year of living dangerously, right? Mm -hmm. Which was uh, Mel Gibson as a reporter in the middle right. of a revolution. Wow. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I guess it was, it's also uh, that, that time period, right? In, and and maybe, you know, uh, and maybe Tresa would have suffered the same fate if, if we tried to produce this 10, 15 years ago. So I think the timing is right. You've got uh, a, a great platform like Netflix who said, make it as Pinoy as possible. 
Um, but going back to to you know um, um, writing about Trese, I mean the the initial audience for Trese was really as Kajo loves to say, it was just me and Kajo. Um, in and again, working in advertising, the job requires you to f- get approval for your work. Right, every day we have to mm-hmm. get our boss to approve the work, and after he approves it, you have to get the client to approve the work. And then, if it gets approved by the client, sometimes it's the audience who suddenly gives you uh, thumbs down, <laughs> hashtag that sucks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you just don't win <laughs> anywhere you go. Yeah. Um, so so that's how you know me and Kajo saw this. You know, working on Trese, and again there was no business plan. Um, we had come from a time when, especially me, I invested uh, money publishing my own comic book years before, and it didn't make money. Mm-hmm. So when we made Trese, it was just. Let's do it because we want to do it. And mm-hmm. after we got an issue done, it was like, okay, let's photocopy maybe 30 copies. You know, mm-hmm. half of which went to family and friends, half of which we sold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so again, yes. not the best business plan in the world. <laughs> um, but but to hear, you know, to, to see the reaction from the... Uh, the comic, I mean, the comic book took a while before we it started to gain a reader base. But eventually, you know, now that it's on Netflix, the react at least the reactions I've seen, and I would love to hear what you know how Kajo's family and friends have reacted to it. I mean, it would range from, um, of course, you know, my my immediate circle of geek friends, you know, would would have have been in touch with me. We've been doing Zoom calls talking about it. An old friend that I haven't spoken to, you know, I've kept in touch on social media, suddenly sends me a message that after seeing the opening credits, he just started crying. Mm-hmm. The moment he saw Manila depicted in that way, he just couldn't help but cry, and you know, feel that sense of pride of like, look, that's that's our Manila being shown there. Um, to who my mom is now in her 70s and I found out that in their Viber group you know 60, <laughs> yeah, 70 Viber. year old grandparents are like you have to watch this show <laughs> 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 they're sending messages to each other of like mm-hmm. it's, it's made by the son of our friend you have to watch this <laughs> <laughs> nice nice <laughs> nice so if you, you've got this range and, and really scary texts like Oh, I'm gonna watch this with my eight-year-old son. I'm going wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe, you should... Maybe you need to watch it first before your eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Son. screen mm-hmm. it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but but, but yeah, Kajo, how, yeah, the... yeah, Kajo, like 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 emotion-wise, man. Like uh, you know, does 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 that? I mean. I can only imagine if I had been working on something for that long. You know, Fifteen years. Really, yeah, like it just broke. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, like come on, man. Like, how's that feel? Like, like here, like you know. Um, honestly, it's it's still overwhelming. Okay. This this, this has always been my answer. Uh, even even before seeing the show, I I, I told everyone that it's uh, it's a weird feeling. I. I I, uh, I uh, well, I'm happy. I'm very happy, <laughs> and I'm excited for the for the possible new readers that this this show will bring in, hopefully. But I think it's maybe because uh, we started this thing as a hobby just to entertain ourselves, and I think I still feel that even after the mm. show, I still I'm still in that space where i just want to do this because it's still fun and i still love it so so uh, i i i think i'm not feeling the the <laughs> supposed <laughs> feeling that you're supposed to feel mm-hmm. when you think this kinds of things happen but yeah it's weird it's weird I can only imagine. I mean, because I'd be like, I told you, I told you, you know, like, yeah, you know people want, like, they want yeah. us, they want us. Want they came in, they want us. You know, and for me, and for me, I can tell you, 
you know, as you know, from one creator to the, you know, to to the next. What what I appreciated was I appreciated your whole tapestry. I appreciated how you, you know, you 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 didn't feel the need to sort of, you know, overwhelm the the uh, the viewers with everything, right? Like every episode, it became a little bit more layered and a little bit more layered. Um, you know, and, and, and so I understood like the worldview. I understood like, okay, like Tresse comes from this long line of, you know, of ass kickers, basically, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, so it's only natural that she can put it down, you know? So I, you know, and, and, and so for me, I was like, man, like I, I can tell you, and I don't know whether or not this was something that you constructed or not, but the first thing I, but, but the first thing I thought after I finished episode six, which, hey, We'll talk about six episodes, but we'll get to that a little later. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk uh, about that. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, you know, for real. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't get the eight. Like, I can't get eight. but you know, I I felt like what I want to do now is I want to read your comics. I I, mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, thank you. You know, and and, and I mm-hmm. think that's possibly sometimes the best uh, the, the the best thing like a, a show like this can do for you is get people sort of interested in the in, in, in the core mm-hmm. material. You see what I'm saying? And so uh, so if if that yeah. wasn't for real so if it so if it so if it wasn't your if, if, if it wasn't like uh something that you had in the back of your mind i just want you to know that you know the the the, the way that it was constructed made me very interested in a core material so well mm-hmm. done yeah thank you i think yeah. i think it's also because when we wrote the comic book we were also not thinking we were assuming that the people who were going to read it were just like us and grew up in the Philippines and would know all of these creatures already. So so in writing it, we didn't go into, you know, your typical caption boxes that say, you know, the Tikbala, a, a horse like creature that, you know, we didn't have to do your With Chris Claremont, you know. <laughs> We can so the it made me it, it made me do research honestly. yeah you yeah know, it, it really did because i was like like they're talking about this like this is some real ish like you know what i'm saying like <laughs> you know it, it it what it didn't sound it it, it it didn't ring like it was manufactured it, it 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 felt like this is some things that people accept you know because because mm-hmm. i guess the thing that the, the thing that uh the, the thing that freaked me out like the first couple of episodes was it's like hey all this magic stuff is going around and these people are wilding out about it like no like, it was like normal <laughs> I hear that a lot. these half horse people are just hanging out you know and i'm just yeah, like, hey, like man yeah, you this... see this dude's like half horse yeah and I'm like, what, what's going on you know? yeah <laughs> oh i guess you know so so yeah. so to me i was just you know that that's what struck me is I was like, look, I got to do some research because mm-hmm. apparently half horse people seem to be what's up in Manila. <laughs> yeah. I need to go to Manila, you know? None of the characters felt false. They felt like they belonged. Yeah. As diverse as it is, it let me know how diverse Manila is and how, how accepting of each other they were in this in this tapestry that you, that you drew and painted for us. It, and it, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. Go ahead. No, and I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna lead into the next question. Unless Earl has something, I was gonna dive into another question because I have another yeah, I got, one. I, got one. No, I, I was just gonna say, like, kind of jump on what uh, y'all have been saying is like mm-hmm. the I, you know, I, I I put on that first episode, and as soon as she started, you know, ta- speaking in, in Tagalog and like, and then you see Bye Bye Yin in the runes, and like they're sta- they're talking about Nunon, uh, sap, uh and it, it's like. Oh my God! This is this is the stuff I grew up with, but like it's going to be reaching a wider audience. And uh, like you said, your friends start crying. I I got emotional. I was like, I can't believe <laughs> these stories that I grew up with. Like everybody's gonna know this now. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 crazy. You know, it, and there's always always like you were you were saying how there's been um, a um, you you were just making it for people like in um, people like you, people who like reading com- comics in the Philippines who who knew these creatures already and I think um, what a lot of people don't realize is that um, a lot of the this folklore it, it, it came over here with you know um, um, my parents and a lot of other people's parents like because we a lot of us know the same folklore and it's 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 um, it's divorced from the land from the Philippines but it's still in, in a lot of us I can still remember going first time going to a, uh, a graveyard and my mom was like, you need to say excuse me, you know? 
you need to say tabi tabi po while you're walking around the graves or else you know you you're going to anger or something so i mean it's 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 i i think i'm just making a statement on how far reaching it is and mm-hmm. it's 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 awesome that um it's going to reach a bigger audience it's it's, it's funny you say that i think part go ahead go ahead budget no, no it, it, just just to say that that's the exciting part that now um that yeah more people will now know will now know to to say tabi tabi po and it's like <laughs> you know usually that's the sort of spiel you have when you have visitors coming to manila and now you're gonna have visitors coming to manila going yeah i already know that <laughs> <laughs> i looked it up i was like what does that mean i, I, I have to go look it up i think that's a real <laughs> word let me look that up <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 honestly, it's honestly like the secret to acceptance really right mm-hmm. you know, when when people are immersed in your culture you know it doesn't seem weird to people anymore, you know? i mean mm-hmm. it, it, it just is what it is and yeah. i think that for the people who grew up in in, in the culture it's affirming right it's mm-hmm. it's like i'm Absolutely. You know, like people see it people see me you know, and I am I am now validated in a in, in a medium where I normally don't get the shout outs. You know what I'm saying? I have mm-hmm. to look up to, to to other people. And the fact that you guys are are creating this tapestry where you know where Filipino people not only feel at home but they feel in charge. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a small thing, gentlemen. It yeah. is not. And you should be very, very proud. I am. <laughs> And I'm not even. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, actually, Thanks. when I was watching it, I saw my own culture in it. I'm black yep. from the South. And I was like, wow, we are so much alike. It is. We, we don't just like chicken and, and fried foods. We have, yeah. we have mythical creatures in common. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Charles, that's, that's, that's actually a cool point, right? Uh-huh. Is, is that when you start seeing other cultures, do things that are yeah. reminiscent of your culture, you feel yep. closer. You see what I'm saying? A lot of yeah. times nowadays, people get so hung up on how we're different and, and you know, mm-hmm. and how I don't like this or how I don't like that, you know, and then you go, oh, well, maybe that started in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that was a black <laughs> thing, but apparently it's not. It's an annoying <laughs> thing. Okay, all right, I'm good. You know, like seriously, I mean, when that stuff gets out into mainstream, you know, general culture, you know, you you do. I I, I feel like you start feeling closer to 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 people who think like you. Or, okay. You know, Another question, because this is the question I really want to ask. So mm-hmm. a weekend. You know, the, it, the show broke out. You're like, oh, we don't oh, know how it's going to do. We don't know how it's going to do. Then all of a sudden, Deadline and Hollywood Reporter drop. Tresse hit the top 10 across 19 markets on Netflix, right? That's crazy. And Netflix didn't push this like they probably should have. And they, they, and they didn't give it the budget it needed because after six episodes, I was like, where's my other two, really four episodes? No, I feel like no. I'm cheated. Like, for real. <laughs> yeah. And what makes it even more more bad, I remember going the next day after I binged it, because we have a show called Binge Word, and I binged it. And uh, I went into Clubhouse to the black anime room. And I'm known as mm-hmm. the guy. And they're like, Charles, <laughs> nice. that shit right there? <laughs> what the fuck happened to Yasuke? Because that shit, this Tresse shit, is amazing. <laughs> and the whole room lit up wow. on how great it was. Like, wow. wow. Like, they're like, this is better than a lot of Japanese shit. It's up there with Jujutsu wow. Kaisen. That was the wow. <laughs> Juj- Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> yeah, they're like, this, man, I'm glad this happened. Why don't we have something <laughs> like this? And this is what black people were saying. I was like, we did have Yasuke. They're like, no, 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 no. It's not <laughs> Tresse. <laughs> For real? I only, I've only seen the first episode of Yasuke. Yeah, and they were like, Tresse was next level. And I was wow. like, yeah, it was. They're like, yeah. the story, the characters, the design. And everybody was going crazy about the twins. The twins were amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh. I, yeah, I ain't going to lie. I mean, you know, I was like, if I could have two twin bodyguards who fly around and shoot people, <laughs> so, I mean, what's the downside? They're, they're... Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing to hear how the twins have really, you know, yeah. seems to have just yeah. in 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 uh, for any audience for that matter. They seem to be the fan favorite. And mm-hmm. um, a couple of years ago, you know, no anime. I ran just for fun. I ran a poll in the in our Facebook group, 
And uh, you know, I said, who's your favorite Tresi character? So you have Alexandra, the happy Kambal, the sad Kambal, Tank, Captain Guerrero, and you know, the twins got the top vote. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> They're just so cool. <clears throat> And people love the wind, the wind girls. The, the they're like, <laughs> like everything just made sense. People are like this just made sense, and it just you know they're like we thought Lashawn was gonna bring it like this, and Tresse really did bring it, and I was like yeah it did, it's really good. <laughs> they're like why why did it only get six episodes? You were at Netflix <laughs> when it got seven. You should have gave it eight or ten. I was like hey I don't I don't control budgets. I just <laughs> push properties. I was just there to push properties. What what I think could work. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think if uh, um, I mean you know I think that was a conscious decision by Jay Oliva and mm-hmm. Tanya Yuso and their producers, uh, and and it, in a in a weird way it kind of did work, right? In, in by by only having six episodes, but by and they made sure they introduced <clears throat> you know every aspect of of the world. I think is what they were able to do, because the other difficult thing is they were they did get it from the first 13 stories of Tresen. Mm-hmm. Mm. So they had to figure out which of the 13 could fit into six episodes. And that's yeah. why some episodes ended up with, you know, two two comic book stories in one episode. Mm. Um, so I, th- but I still think it, it worked out well. They were, it surprised me how they found uh, common themes and they linked it together. Um, like in episode two where, you know, Trese meets the Tikbalang and eventually, and has to talk to the father of the Tikbalang racer. Mm-hmm. And then eventually she meets with the Bagyon, right? The, the, the electrical elementals. Mm-hmm. And he has to deal with the father of, uh, of this brat of <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, a character. So, and though in the comic book, those are like two separate, they were on two separate books. So the writers were able to see, oh, this is about this the, the most especially is about fathers and sons and about families and they put it together into one episode and and it you know for me it suddenly as a new viewer it's like oh that makes sense mm-hmm. so so yeah they, they were able to to find those uh interesting themes and make the six episodes really uh full uh you know or maybe <laughs> or maybe it was too much <laughs> or not enough from the sound of it yeah, because yeah. I I, I want to you know because I'm 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 sort of low key mad that my man Nuno didn't get more screen time. You know what I'm Yo. saying? <laughs> I'm I'm digging him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he in the gutter. You know, but he trying to get his come up. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's not giving him the proper candy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yo, son, like yes. show my boy some love. Yeah, I love the rock bodyguards behind him. I was like, what's going on here? He gets bodyguards. They just pop up and they just chill. Like what? We dare you to do something. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, Black Clubhouse was going crazy over this show. They were like <laughs> the characters. It. They were like, wow. <laughs> they were like, this Filipino show is like the blackest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, I just thought that happened. <laughs> Let me ask a, a, a possibly insensitive question. You know, I don't know. Like, I always saw like Filipinos as like the Black Asians for some strange <laughs> reason, right? Like, I don't know why. You know, is that you know because every time there was like a dance show, the Filipinos were the best. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? You know, so know. Is, is is that a thing? Yeah, we're all right. hip hop. Yeah, yeah but like, yes, the best yes, DJs yes. in the world. Yeah, for real. They own like, that. You know they own okay, uh, all right. So it's not my. Can, I, can, can we put no. that as the blurb? Chop can we put that as the blurb? I think it's the blackest show I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, want that, I want that as a blurb. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that up there. We'll put that up there. But how does that make you feel that it cross cultures and you hit nineteen markets in the top ten? It, it goes, I mean. Uh, I know your mom I mean, is proud, but how do you feel? <laughs> it, it does make me, I mean, obvious, I mean the, the obvious answers were, were happy. And at the same time, it's such a, it, it, there is that feeling of validation. But at the same time, if people ask us, you know, how did you do it? We wouldn't know how we did it. And I think it mm. just comes down to wanting to tell our own story. Mm-hmm. And funnily enough, I guess the more Pinoy we made it, the more universal it became somehow. 
Um, that you know, seems, that's, that's a running how, theme. Yeah. You just answered your question, budget. Seriously, <laughs> right? You know, seriously, right? Because a lot of times, you know, in these in in entertainment, you know, everyone's always got their two cents that they want to put in. Everybody says, "Oh, you know how I can make this better? How about yeah? How about you be quiet and let me do my thing?" You know, and 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 honestly you know that's that's what it seems like to me is like there's there's a there's a level of passion and authenticity that that is that is there and you probably did that because you kept your own counsel like you and Kajo said you know this is what we want to do and are we entertained and you mm. found out all of a sudden that you weren't special in what you needed or what you wanted. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? You just had to put it out there. And as soon as you put it out there, everybody was like, damn, this is good. So, I mean, and I ask you how that feels, you know, because everybody creative wants to feel that, right? Everybody, everybody mm -hmm. who is creative wants to feel like that thing that's in them that they're trying to express mm -hmm. is accepted and loved and you know, and, and people get thirsty over it. They, and, and so, as far as I'm concerned, you two cats are living the dream, and I can't get enough of that, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I, I think you. that also, you know, reflecting on what you just uh, said, Travis, it's it's yeah, trusting your gut. Um, I think we, and especially in advertising, one of my one of the things that I'm not a fan of is attending these focus group discussions oh my God. and then you know <laughs> and they, they show your work to a bunch of people and like and then they all have opinions about it and if, none of them are from the philippines <laughs> <laughs> so so it was like you know and and then and then the client turns to you and says oh well that lady said that we have to she didn't like that part of the commercial <laughs> so so yeah i think again it, it, uh, this being a passion project and a hobby we just trusted our guts on like what do we like what does what what can i write a script that will surprise kajo and i think when kajo draws it it's like you know how can i draw this that it will surprise budget and and that's what happens every mm -hmm. time i get a script from uh, the art from kajo it's like Whoa! What's what's happening here? My game up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look, he, he, and, and, and if there's any if there's any advice I could give you, you know, you two guys going forward is remember, it is that commitment that got you here. Yeah. Right. So do not let anybody tell you <laughs> any differently. You know what I'm saying? Because you got here by being true to yourselves. Y mm -hmm. Yo, we have we, we have a chat. And people want to know we're gonna have Tresse Lego soon because I would be so down with that right now. I'll own Tres every like set, play set, every set, yeah. <laughs> every set, <laughs> every set. <laughs> the Balete Three play set. Yeah. I just want, I just want the dagger. I just want the dagger set. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you know, my Legos. You know, yeah. daggers. I um, can still ask as long as you, you know. An another question. Another question. Because I know that you all worked 15 years on this. When you finally saw it and it blew up and you hit all these markets, did Netflix come to y'all and said, hey, we need y'all to write another season? <laughs> Bypass the comic book, write the, write the anime. Did they say that to y'all yet? They said that to y'all yet? No, no, we're waiting. We're all waiting. Um, um, yeah, no, I think, you know, when Netflix announces it, it'll probably be the same time we'll learn about it. But <laughs> probably. Uh, most definitely, that's the first question that came out of people after binge watching it. So mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, Netflix has heard. <laughs> People asking for the second season. Um, so yeah, still waiting. Um, we we don't know, but yeah, every now and again we like we like poke uh, the the Netflix marketing team and like say, so how's it doing? Yeah. <laughs> what do you? Yeah, I know one thing that that stuck out to me was y'all really humanize Alexandra. Like she like when she was boxing by herself and she started crying. I was like, wow, I feel that. She was just thinking about her dad. And then when when the when Datu came and was like, your dad is a piece of shit, and this is oh, why. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh I was heartbroken. God. I was like, he's yeah. lying. He's yeah. lying. This is not true. 
<laughs> but yeah, that, that was, that was um, uh, again, those are moments that didn't come out so much in the comic book. And I'm mm-hmm. so happy that uh, Jay and Tanya found a way to show more of that side mm-hmm. of Trece. And I think that's what, again, you know, the, the scenes you're reacting to are the scenes that, that people are, even like old time readers, are like mm-hmm. saying, oh, wow, we're now seeing this side of Trece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so it, when you when you've been writing Tresse, you've been drawing Tresse, um, and now it's animated, right? And now you can see these characters moving, you can hear them, you can hear their voices, right? Mm. Like, is that is that sort of surreal for you? Like, oh man, this is like my character. <laughs> she's, she's like she's living and breathing. Like, how was it like when you first like? saw like Tresse like moving and, 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 and speaking. <clears throat> surreal. Surreal is the word. <laughs> That's the right word. But it, it's surreal, uh, but also kind of familiar because they, they, they casted the perfect, I think, well, I think my, for me personally, they casted the perfect voice actors. So the way they say those lines is how I hear them. Mm. When I'm reading budget script or when the comic books are printed, that's how I hear them. So I think it's it's great. It's and, you had to, and, and you had to get like, uh, you know, I, and, and I I learned this from you know doing more doing more research and all this other kind of stuff. The accents were really important for you guys, right? Uh, you know, and I know it is. I know I, you know I know because whenever I hear like, you know, black people being written by white people, for example, I'm like, no one black says that, right? Ja, like, turkey. no one says ja, that, turkey. Right? <laughs> that, right? So, so that was, so I, I, I gotta, that's gotta be a thing too, right? Like, get, like making sure those accents are right, making sure that, you know, the sayings are, are, are you know, because that, that, that lends to your authenticity, right? Yeah, the um, and again, Tanya Houston, our producer, uh, joined most of the, the the recordings, especially when it came to casting the spells. Uh, and I was surprised at the decision of keeping the spells in Filipino, even when it got translated into the other languages. So I, again, it's great that. Um, you know, they didn't decide to, to, to change it or, but that, yeah, now you've got people, you know, Googling for Tabi Tabi Po, you know, and all of the <laughs> other Filipino phrases that they, <laughs> that, that, that they use. Um, the, funnily enough, the, 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 um, the audience that gave the most criticism about the, the accents are the Filipinos. <laughs> Oh. So, so we we can never be satisfied. <laughs> I, I I was I was uh you know lurking around some of the subreddits and I was like wow so <laughs> the, the, people have a lot of things to say. <laughs> yes yes and I, the thing is I'm uh, um I I understand where they're coming from but at the same time I think uh, we just got so used maybe it's because we're not used to hearing that accent in the show. Mm-hmm. Right or more often than not, if the sh- if the accent is is used, the most prominent place it's normally heard is with comedians, right? Mm, right. So, <clears throat> so we don't normally hear it in everyday conversation. So, but but I think I mean I think that's what they were again. Jay Oliva said, "Well, that's the accent I grew up hearing, so that's what I that's what he wanted from the actors." And and right. again, it just it just gives that level of authenticity that. Uh, or maybe it's too authentic, and that's why the Filipinos are like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, I, you know, when when I got the audition sides, um, it yeah. it specifically asked for like Manila, so um, I think they were going very, they were trying to go very authentic with it, um, um, and um, yeah, I, I I think it was very, it seemed like it was very important to, because usually they wouldn't put that in like a, a casting breakdown unless it was something that was essential to the character. So. Mm. Mm. Has anything that the um, has has any input that you've gotten from people's reactions, you know, to the to the show so far, made you think like hmm, maybe we should explore this a little more in a comic book, or uh, 
or you know people seem to be really responding to this so maybe we should you know uh you know it, it's, as far as the comic is concerned do more here any thoughts? Uh, me personally, uh, on the visual side, I try to not listen to any of the, <laughs> of the comments. Mm-hmm. I try. I um, I will try my best to keep the two entities separate, the comic book and the anime. It's I think it's more fun that way. You get two varieties of uh, mm-hmm. of a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like I heard, the comic books are darker. People are like the comic books are darker. <laughs> Everybody's in the comic books are darker, yeah. and you'll oh, love man, it. I gotta get that. Man. Yeah, there's a reason you'll love it. You will love yeah, it. It's sold out everywhere right it now. It is so. sold out everywhere. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> so, I don't so mind you just let y'all so, know we're trying to get a, a couple of editions here just to let so, you all know. So I got, I, I got my last copy from Archipelago Books. Like oh, the, it was, okay. uh, oh. Yeah. Right. So, well, that's a, that actually leads me to a good question because, you know, for me, you know, like I stopped collecting comic books and I stopped collecting comic books because I feel like I'm a comic book reader. I am not a comic book mm. collector because no one pays me what my comics are worth. Right. So are your are your comics available digitally? Because that's how I read comics now, because, you know, I've just. I'd rather buy them and read the story and know all about the story than thinking, oh, one day this is going to be like worth a million dollars, you know? <laughs> no one's going to pay you a million, right? So can you can you buy Tresse digitally? And if and if so, uh, where? Yep, it's on Comixology. Okay, excellent. Then it is on Comixology. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm going to go grab it myself. Yeah. That's all I need oh, to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, I yeah. took that night, baby. Okay. It, it took a, a while for me to get um, to get into digital reading, but I actually like it a lot now. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. I can carry 15 comic books with me at one time anywhere I go. It's amazing. I, I, and you can right. you can read them on a toilet and not mess up your book. <laughs> That's true. Yep. That's <laughs> right. Right. That's true. So, what else are you all working on? I figured this. Y'all y'all were talking and y'all like, hey, I got some other stories I'm gonna tell in this world that may not be around Alexandria. Can y'all share anything? Um, right now, we, me and Kajo are are trying to get back up to speed. Oh, did I lose everybody? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No, 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 no! No! Dropping out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my I, I lost everybody. The internet guys didn't want you to share that to the public. I guess <laughs> they were like, "No, we're gonna boo. we're gonna cut that off." <laughs> Could you repeat Are that, please? I missed all of it. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah. So me and Kaz are working on book number eight. Okay. Um, and um, be, and we've been busy working with our U.S. publisher, Ablaze. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, uh, book one is out. Book two should be coming out. I think very soon. Okay. I think this got delayed uh, at the. I think uh, a boat got stuck somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Book number two <laughs> should be uh, arriving in comic book stores soon. And number three, uh, which is where you see the God of War, uh, will be coming out later this year. So, oh, nice. so, yeah, so before the end of the year, you would be able to get the first three books, which is the inspiration for a lot of the stories in the, in the anime. Uh, but uh, in the Philippines, we're already up to seven books and me and Kajo have started on the eighth book, and we have actually started to serialize uh, the first uh, Trece story of book eight on our Facebook page, just so that, mm. because we always get the question of, so when's book eight coming out? And we're saying, it's there on Facebook. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, and just to make things a little bit different, this is the first time Trece is visiting another country. Okay. So Ooh. in this particular case, she has gone to Indonesia, and mm. she's in Jakarta investigating <laughs> a case. Um, so it's our little tribute to our That's producers because the exciting um, the, our other producer is Shanti Harmain. She's Indonesian, and the company is based in Jakarta. So we wanted to make Jakarta uh, a, a, a little more uh, magical and scary uh, okay. for mm-hmm. for the people there. 
Okay. So, we're, so is Katya, are, are you still keeping your insane schedule now or, or, or have you slowed down a little bit now? <laughs> right. You know, because it seems like, yeah, if you can, because if you can do a page in a, in, in a day, in an hour, you know, yeah, in an hour, yeah, in in an hour, hour, yeah. like, yeah, come on, wild. like, I mean, you know, we should be on book 12 at this point. <laughs> yeah. But you need to be pumping out these words. Yeah, come on, Kato, yeah. make it happen. I mean, yeah. come on. Don't, 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 don't George R. R. Martin this. Don't George R. R. Martin yeah. this. No, we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you need to move next to a Starbucks, you know? So <laughs> Well, when I promised Budge that I'll finish the the the, the, the page in an hour, I uh, I promised to finish it, but I didn't promise quality. <laughs> 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 because I because well we don't have a boss <laughs> so and we just want to to produce something mm -hmm. that will entertain both of us so mm -hmm. not too conscious about the detail i just want to tell the story okay so that that is no longer true after five uh, issues of trese back mm -hmm. in uh, 2009 i think because uh, we noticed that people are actually buying it for 30 bucks that's that's less than a dollar but mm -hmm. I still feel uh, guilty for not putting out something that is worth their their money. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, the one hour uh, a, a page schedule became um, three hours, four hours, and then also back then I was I was single. I don't have a I'm not I don't have a family yet. I don't have a house to 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 pay yet. So <laughs> so. I was just doing the, 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 the sorry. So, so, so Kajo basically, basically is saying, Hey man, you know what? I was young and I was hungry, you know, <laughs> yes, and yes. Like, you know and, 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 and there's this opportunity, but now, you know, since I'm a real artist and I need <laughs> to concentrate on doing like great things, you know, it takes me yes. longer. Is that basically? Yes. Have to. Put in more work this time for the <laughs> buying public. <laughs> one thing, one thing I noticed about the series because I haven't read a comic book because I didn't get my hands on, but now I can get on Comicsology, uh, is that you talked about politics and the political atmosphere and corruption in the Philippines. Man, you probably have a lot to write about right now <laughs> with the current president. And then you went um, to Indonesia, you definitely got a lot to write about. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, I, I did Asian Pacific studies and so I'm like, yeah. wow, you, you all have a lot. <laughs> a lot of things going on. A lot of it's things a, going on. It's a, it is a wealth of material. Um, but yeah, I mean it is it is again, it's a it's a great mix of stories we heard growing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know how you know if you if you want to get your government papers uh, really fast, there's a guy who knows a guy, and you just need to you know slip him the right amount of money and you'll get your documents uh, in less than a day. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and at the same time, it's the stuff you see on on newspaper headlines, right? And and it, you know, Trese is a is a crime story, so. Mm -hmm. The, these characters uh, need to pop up and yeah unfortunately these characters are still around in real life okay okay Kyle, <laughs> um i heard you had some ig live action going on could you talk a little okay. bit about that they're pretty fire i've been I, I've, I've watched a few of them yeah uh, that's for me yes yeah, yeah. for you for uh, you uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, can't uh, nobody uh, draw like you here come on huh? <laughs> <laughs> Now Mondays to Thursdays, I do a uh, Instagram live uh, around 8 a.m. Philippine time. I do it for just maybe less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's well, it's selfishly. Well, it's for me because I, I need to warm up. Mm -hmm. So might as well, might as well show people how I do it. And uh, unlike, unlike maybe 20 years ago, I'm I'm too self-conscious right now. I don't really care. If I make mistake, <laughs> mistakes, I showed the people uh, who's interested that side of me too. That some mm. things I don't know how to to draw yet. So it's just I, fun for me. 
that uh, the Tik Balang mech that you did a couple uh, days ago. <laughs> that was pretty fire. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Uh, I also think it's. I also think it's pretty cool that you like, like you broadcast like your mistakes or you know how mm. how you get from point A to point B. Because, yeah. Like, you know, I think that's yeah. the problem actually with social media a lot, right? Is people don't see the failure mm. uh, mm-hmm. on the way mm-hmm. to, on the way to True. success, right? And so True. when you when you're when you're brave enough to say, hey, you know, I don't exactly know how this is gonna go down, but let's do this together. You know, yes. it, it does. It gives people who, you know, are maybe not as talented as you are, like they see you going through it and they go, OK, you know, if I'm messing up on my on my on my way to to making this happen, you know, Kajo uh, messes up and he's got to yep. hit the show. Yep. <laughs> yep. We can do Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. <laughs> we don't make mistakes. We make happy Afro needs to be a little bigger. Yeah. You have to start staying at Kajo. I, right. I don't make mistakes. I have happy accidents. <laughs> There's a little thick ball over here. It's just, it's just hiding. Yes. Little thick ball is gonna live by this little tree. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of the Filipino kids all around in the Philippines, across the world, in the United States that look at you all and said, "I'm going to do that now." It's kind of like the Olympics or any sport. I know for Black people, when we see one of us break it, like Simone Biles has ushered in <laughs> oh, the yeah. whole league, a little yeah. Black girl gymnast. Every every yeah. friend I know that has a child under the age of eight. She's a gymnast right now. <laughs> they went from tennis players to gymnasts overnight. Oh, literally makes sense. overnight. It makes sense. Tennis <laughs> players to gymnasts. I mean, it makes sense. She, she is she's re- she's oh, wrecking right. everything yeah. right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> what do you say to these children and these adults that are scared to do what you did? How can you encourage them to do what you did and actually bring light and love to the Filipino culture around the world? Yep. I think. Um, Again, coming from 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 a whole lot of failures, I think what we realize is that um, if there's a story that you really want to tell, that you need to start working on it mm-hmm. and then give yourself a deadline and then finish it. Mm-hmm. Right? Just finish the first draft of that story and not worry about is this perfect mm-hmm. because it won't be. Um, and the moment you're done with that chapter or page or whatever it is, then then give yourself license to move on to the next thing, right? The next chapter, the next story, the next project, because that's where you get better, right? Okay. And and um, and just keep on going and just to just have fun. I think mm. I think that was that was the crucial part. Uh, you know, reflecting on how me and Kajo made the presse. We just kept having fun with what we were doing. And um, eventually, and sorry, and lastly, I think the last ingredient is don't be afraid to share it. Mm. Um, there was a certain point when uh, uh, the comic book store where, where we were selling presse uh, needed to do some inventory um, uh, season. So we couldn't sell presse. So I thought, okay, I'll just upload the first three issues on, on my blog and share it with people. And the funny thing was, uh, um, after people read it, they said, where can we buy it? You know, it wasn't like they read it and they went, aha, I got something for free. They, they loved it mm. enough to say, where can I get a copy of it? Okay. Any any- okay, um, for me, just just keep doing what you love that's for the younger for the kids out there and for those who are already working don't lo- lose your day job keep your day job and then keep doing what you yes. love find yes. find yes. a way <laughs> find the time <laughs> find the time because especially most especially when you're frustrated and you don't want to do it that's the perfect time to do it cuz i think if you can do it when you're when you're tired and frustrated, imagine if what you can do when you're inspired. Mm-hmm. That's deep. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's hella wise right there. Good. <laughs> yeah. Man. Absolutely. 
Travis Earl, what y'all got? Y'all got anything for them? Man, look, I like, like, hey, man, I, I went from zero to a hundred, man. Just, <laughs> you know, seriously. I mean, like I said, it, 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 it just inspires me to see creators like, you know, doing, the, doing the damn thing, right? Mm-hmm. And and unapologetically and being mm-hmm. being who they are. So I salute you too. Yes, you know, I, I really do. Um, yes. You know, because because you are doing exactly what creators, you know, mm-hmm. from from comic books to 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 novelists to video, video game makers to, to 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 all those things, right? You always get told, "Don't do this, do that, don't do mm-hmm. that, do this," you know. And and when you when you can just say, "Look, I'm I'm, I'm doing it my way." Mm-hmm. Yeah. A yeah. lot a yeah. lot of creators lost their way in the bleaching. Yeah. It's not just the brainwashing. They got they, yeah, you blind, wash they did bleaching. And it's like yeah. it doesn't come out the same when you make it all white. We're it, adding it, to the it, color. It, it, well, <laughs> and it's also it's, it's it's also important, you know, because this is the thing too. Like people need to understand that this is it this is not new for you too, right? Like mm-hmm. this is this is years. This <sighs> this is 15 years, mm-hmm. right? Now dig that yeah. seriously, right? Because sometimes people people go down a path and they go down a path for a year or whatever, and they're just like, "Well, I learned a lot, but I'm going to do something else," you know. And they just don't capitalize on what you know. Because look, the 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 path to victory is always you know it's 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 failure after failure after failure after failure, you know. And you gotta yeah. you gotta keep going with it. And Kaja, you said something that I think is important, which is to say you you do what you love mm-hmm. right yeah and you and you do it when you don't feel like it mm-hmm. you know because, <laughs> because trust me trust me like when you do feel like it you are going to be unstoppable and mm-hmm. you, you two mm-hmm. are just mm-hmm. that you're, you're 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 unstoppable so i you know i love you i really do, mm-hmm. I really thank, do. You. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you i hope y'all get a million comic books y'all can continue this thing as long as back <laughs> As long as Batman's been running, copies. As, <laughs> many, as many, I want as many editions. Like we want to say version number four. I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a signed version for real. Yeah, <laughs> you know? you know. I'll be a comic I'll collect. Yeah, yeah. chromium yeah, like, cover. You know, you know variant saying? cover. You know, you yeah, got the hip hop cover over here. You know what I'm saying? Can I <laughs> you know? get some? I mean, you have your Miles Morales version of Tresse. Has anybody done that? Like a uh, uh, into the. Know, Verse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Has anybody done that? Like a, a what you gonna call it? Like a, a remix of of ah, oh, that'll be dope. A mashup. Man, I'm not. I cannot wait for you all to go to Comic Con or somewhere and see somebody dress up. It, it would be great to, to visit you guys and this <laughs> and uh, this, uh, if that that's the other uh, that's gonna be the other crazy dream mm-hmm. to to be at Comic Con. <laughs> you're gonna Next be year, there. Hopefully. Let and, us know. It's yeah. like down the road from us, you know. Yeah, we're okay. gonna be there. Okay. We'll help y'all put that panel together. I will. You know, we will help you do that for real. It won't oh, be our first Comic Con panel. It won't. It won't. <laughs> it won't. We're like, yeah, yeah, we got the creators of Tresse here too. <laughs> And that's when you have when you that's meet that first hype. little girl that's like five years old and she walks over to you and she's dressed, dressed as up like Alexandra <laughs> Tress saying it's like this is my girl. I'm in love with her. I have no business reading this comic, but I love the anime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's this and Coco Limp Coco Melon. It's this and Coco yeah, Melon. Yes. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's it, Coco Melon. That's gonna be yeah, yeah. that's it. That's that's gonna be I can't wait for y'all. Y'all have any last words you want to share with the audience and people that are going to get their ears full of this? Um, just thanks again for uh, watching the show. Thanks for watching it in multiple languages. That's the, yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing we've been hearing from people, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and yes, if uh, and hopefully if it's your first time to ever hear of Trese and you enjoyed the show, please do check out a comic book. Uh, it's it should be in your favorite comic book stores as well as yes on Comicsology. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for having us. And yes, thank thanks to you guys. <laughs> for, it was fun. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, thank you. I'll, as we close out, we want to thank you all for coming on the show. This has been a very, very exciting, and we were dying to do actually interview both of you all. We were really excited <laughs> about this. Uh, before we close, out, I want to give a shout out to Digital Click. If y'all see the overlay of this, the Tressy overlay that comes from Digital Click. Uh, Crystal, she's Filipina, and she actually does a lot of all the amazing work for our network. Her and her husband do amazing work with Michael, their friend. And we work with people of color all the time. That's that's our thing. It's BIPOC all the time, all day. And thank you, Earl, for coming on and with your <laughs> soothing, sultry voice as always. Okay, Earl. Thanks for yes, having me. Yes. <laughs> and, and you all, y'all don't realize Earl uh-huh. was on the Tresse show. It's called Pots and Pan Geekery, and they made a Tresse meal. And you know what yeah, I'm really yeah. upset about? I was not there to eat any I'm so of sorry. It. It's, all good. it's all good. We're going to have our time. <laughs> We're going to have our moment. Because right. you like cooking, I like eating. We're, that's a perfect relationship. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I, I don't even doubt it. Yeah. Well, um, Kajo Budget, you're more than welcome to join us anytime. We would yes. love Thank to you, have Kai. you all all the time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that said, you all, good night. Everybody have a good, good night, evening. Everybody. God bless. Peace. See you. Thank you.